Welcome back to PointCarding.com and NKA's Carding Essentials. I'm Eric Gunderson, and today we're going to walk through how to replace the head gasket and the cylinder head assembly on this Briggs & Stratton 206 racing engine. To remove the cylinder head assembly on this 206 engine, which is for a customer, we've decided that we're going to actually remove the cylinder head and replace it as we have some issues with the valve guides in it. Um, we are going to need quite a few tools. So let's walk through them now. I have a 5 8 socket, deep socket for removing the spark plug out of the cylinder head. It's going to be one of my first steps. A 5 millimeter Allen head wrench to re remove the exhaust assembly, as well as a 10 millimeter wrench to remove the bracing that supports the exhaust system. Next, I'm going to remove the rocker cover. That's going to use a 10 millimeter socket. Um, and then I'm going to have to loosen up my adjusters on the rocker arms inside the valve train. And that is going to use a 4 millimeter Allen as well as a 5 8 wrench. Or you can use that 5 8 socket that we use for the spark plug. We're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench to remove the carburetor. As well as a 5 millimeter Allen that we referenced before to remove the carburetor spacer from the actual cylinder head when we go to put the new cylinder head on. We are also going to need a 10 millimeter a uh, deep socket to remove the main lag bolts on the cylinder head when we're ready to pull that off. And while you don't need to do this, uh, for a demonstration I'm going to actually remove this cylinder shield so that we can see it a little bit better. So for that you're going to need a small quarter inch drive socket and a 7 millimeter deep socket to remove that as well. Like a lot of maintenance on the Briggs 206 engine, especially on the top end, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, wrench here and remove the uh, spark plug. So that takes a 5 8 deep socket. This one's already broken loose, but normally you would break it loose. Get it part way out of the bore, and then spin it loose and set it aside. Now again, this engine is for a customer, and considering the current situation that we are in, I uh, hope you're all well out there, I'm wearing gloves just to keep uh, myself isolated from the engine. So uh, that's why you see the blue gloves this time. Um, now I have my spark plug out. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, my exhaust assembly. So I need a 10 millimeter wrench here and a 5 millimeter Allen key, uh, as well as it looks like a 5 millimeter Allen key on the bottom to remove uh, this exhaust. Depending on your era of Briggs engine or if someone else has worked on it, this might be a 5 millimeter Allen, or uh, from the factory, it's a 10 millimeter uh, bolt. So I'll take uh, my 10 millimeter bolt here, or sorry, wrench, break this loose. Back it all the way off. And for removal, you can use an impact gun if you're in a major hurry, um, but I don't recommend it. Um, also, be careful, of course, when you go to break these loose, uh, your exhaust header bolts. I recommend you know getting both loose before you really back them out, um, especially on an engine that is used and not brand new. Um, take your time when removing these. Make sure you don't drop anything down into the cylinder, as of course. Even though we're removing the cylinder head, it's just bad practice. So we want to pull this off, being careful to also grab the little washer that goes with it, like so. And do the same on the other side. Very common um, with this engine actually to see the head gasket leak. Uh, if the cylinder head warps significantly, or if you didn't get things torqued down uh, quite tightly, uh, that can be an issue. So now I've got this whole assembly ready to remove, and I'm going to uh, pick it up and just set it aside over here out of shot. Um, and then um, I've got my copper exhaust gasket shim uh, that I'll also set aside right there. Now I'm going to remove the rocker arm um, cover, um, and this is kind of the top end of the engine. I'm just angling it towards you guys so you can see. I just start by breaking these loose. And because we're replacing the cylinder head, we're going to have to pull this all the way off. The first thing I want to do is break them all loose. And technically, to pull the cylinder head off, you don't have to take this off, but you're going to have to replace it on another one, so you might as well. Get those loose. And then again, especially if you're at the track, um, where things tend to disappear into kind of the twilight zone, uh, bring these out with your hands 
uh, rather than just let them fall on the ground or something like that. Obviously, when you're working on engines, you want to try to do this in a clean environment, but the reality is sometimes we have to do it at the track. Okay, so now I've removed this. One little tip that I like is I'll take the locker cover and I'll actually set some of my hard work in it um, because, you know, it's got a little wall to it and it's less likely to move. Okay. Uh, the very next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break loose uh, these adjuster screws here so that when I pull the cylinder head off, I don't have any tension on um, my uh, push rods. This isn't an essential thing. I mean, as soon as you loosen these up, but it's just a good common practice. So in our Bablash video, we talked about finding top dead center. I don't need to find exact top dead center, but let's try and find something to take the tension off of our valve springs. So right, right about there, you can see that we've got these mostly loose. They're a little bit tight, but not too bad. So if I go to break these loose right now, when these are tightened down, that runs the risk of actually potentially stripping these right here. Um, I know this because I've seen it happen and I've done it a couple times. So there's nothing wrong with doing it that way, but I strongly suggest instead taking the wrench in your 5 8 socket and just simply break them loose on the adjusters first and then back these out a little bit. Now you can see these are nice and loose and when I go to pull this off, it's not going to be a problem. The very next thing is I'm going to bring this around and just for the sake of illustration, you don't really have to do this, but uh, it's going to make it easier if you break this off. So I'm going to um, get my uh, quarter inch drive socket and this is our cylinder shield. This is a heat shield that is required to be installed on the 206 engine um, when it's in operation. But again, we're removing the cylinder head assembly right now, so uh, we need to basically get that out of the way. So now that's loose. You just kind of pull up and, and knock it sideways. This notch fits underneath the rocker cover plate here, so just pull it sideways. Sometimes if they're really stubborn or something's a little tweaked, this uh, top plate here, the control panel, you can actually pull those loose and kind of move it to the side. Um, but I'm just going to set that aside, uh, maybe over here. And now you can see our whole uh, valve assembly. So this is our uh, cylinder head and obviously the uh, short block of the engine. So really, um, from here, it's about pulling the head off. For convenience, I'm actually going to remove the fuel line uh, for the carburetor. Obviously, if you have a chance to, make sure that you drain the fuel uh, from this, disconnect the fuel line, drain it into a fuel jug or something like that before you do this so you don't make a mess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this as an opportunity to remove the carburetor now while I have it braced against something else so that I only have to use one 10 millimeter wrench. So I loosen up my jam nuts on either side of the carburetor and I'm going to back those off. Again, be careful to do this in an area or have your hands present in an area where uh, things aren't going to get uh, lost. So the last thing you want to do, especially if you're thrashing at the track, is be looking for something uh, when you could be working on your cart. So the carburetor assembly has come off. I'm going to set that aside. And um, now what you can see, if I move this, is uh, this is our carburetor spacer. This actually needs to come off as well, and we're going to have to reinstall it. So uh, for that, I'm going to use my 5 millimeter Allen, and I'm going to come in here. And this is why having the carburetor removed is nice, because I can actually fit it through the bolt holes for the carburetor and break these loose. These tend to be quite tight, um, especially if anyone's ever worked on them or if they're from the factory, these tend to be very tight. Again, be careful not to get these in the engine, set them aside. You will know that these bolts go to this because they have these integrated washers on them, um, whereas most things on the Briggs 206 does not. So if you ever get confused, remember that it has those integrated flat washers. And if you're lucky, most of the time this is the case, unless the engine got really, really hot, when you pull this off, it should also take the little gasket that goes with it. So pay attention to the direction that this goes on with the slider, the slotted hole here, going up and down, needs to be rearward relative to the rest of the engine, towards the back of the cart. So set that aside. Um, that's a piece that you may want to clean out, uh, you know, just get any debris out of the plenum uh, when you get a chance. And now, truly, we are really ready to pull the uh, cylinder head assembly off 
of this. So I'm going to now pull off my 5 8 socket there. And I'm going to take my 3 8 deep drive of ratchet and deep socket. And I'm going to brace myself against the engine and use leverage to break these loose. Now remember, these were torqued down at the factory or from whoever reinstalled the cylinder head the last time. So you need to brace this, kind of brace yourself, ideally not against the rocker arms, and push down, okay? And we don't want to get them all the way loose, but we want to start loosening them up, and I want to go in a kind of a crosswise pattern when I do this. So I'll start on, say, the top left, I'll go to the right, the top right, then I'll go down here, break this one loose, and unless, of course, this cylinder head you're never going to use again, um, you want to prevent warping it any more than you can. Anytime you loosen or tighten it, it does inevitably do that a little bit. And now I've got it mostly loose. Just for speed, I'm going to switch back over to uh, this tool here. Made by a pit posse. You can get it um, on Amazon. It's one of my favorite tools that I have in my toolbox. It just makes spinning things out and loosening them uh, much faster. So now I'm just pulling my cylinder head bolts out. So these are these long 10 millimeter lag bolts going one at a time. Once they're loose, you can pull them out in whatever order you want because it's not exerting any torque on the cylinder head. Now I can actually take the cylinder head off of the engine. So as I go to do this, now again, if you're in the pits or something like this, take your time doing this. If you get dirt or something like that in the short block or drop one of these connecting or uh, push rods, in the dirt, you're gonna spend a lot of time cleaning it and that's just gonna irritate you. So take your time pulling this out. This is why I took the play off of this so that naturally as I pull this off and I just kind of wiggle it side to side, obviously if it's warm, this might be a little bit more difficult, but as I pull it out, I bring my hand underneath just to hold these two um, rods in place, these push rods in place. The other thing this will do is this prevents me from mixing these up. Uh, no two push rods are exactly the same. So um, they're very, very close, but we ideally want to, it's just good practice to match them and make sure that they're on uh, the correct side. So as I pull this off, you'll see that a little bit of material on um, my uh, cylinder head got uh, pulled with it. Not a lot, so we really don't have any cleanup to do, um, but that is one cylinder head removed. With the cylinder head removed, now it's time to install the new cylinder head and gasket. Put the cylinder head gasket on the cylinder head itself with the raised edges facing downwards towards the short block. Move the push rods from the short block and insert the cylinder head into the short block using the pins that are drilled into the short block as guides. Then reinsert the push rods using the same sides that you took out for the exhaust and the intake respectively. I'm then going to insert the lag bolts that have a 10 millimeter hex head on them to tighten down the cylinder head using a 10 millimeter extension and a 10 millimeter socket going in an X pattern until they're relatively snug. We don't want to tighten them all the way down, but we want to get them pretty tight. Then take your rocker arms and put them on top of the push rods and tighten down your adjusters until they're relatively snug. By doing this, we're going to make the process of setting our valve lash just a little bit quicker once we've torqued down our cylinder head onto the short block. Use a torque wrench and a setting of about 18 foot pounds, which translates to 215 inch pounds, to go in an X pattern with a 10 millimeter socket and tighten down the lag bolts that tighten your cylinder head to the short block. If you haven't set your valve lash before, go ahead and check out our valve lash video on how to adjust and correctly set the valve lash on your Briggs & Stratton 206 racing engine. Check it out right there. Next, reinsert the carburetor spacer using the five millimeter Allen key and your Allen bolts, making sure to get it nice and tight against the cylinder head. Then reinstall your carburetor using the 10 millimeter hex nuts and a 10 millimeter wrench. Make sure to take your time to get it aligned relative to the intake spacer. Then reinstall your fuel line. Then reinstall the heat shield using the seven millimeter hex head bolt. And then reinstall your exhaust system, making sure to put the copper exhaust gasket in first. Use the five millimeter Allen bolts on the exhaust header and then tighten down the braces and the supports, getting those nice and tight. Last but not least, go ahead and reinsert your spark plug and your engine's ready to go. That's going to do it for this video on how to install a cylinder head and a head gasket on a Briggs & Stratton 206 engine. If you liked this video and found it helpful, go ahead and give us a like, a subscribe, and leave a comment below. 
Let us know what we got right. Let us know if you have any questions. For PointCarding.com, I'm Eric Gunderson. Thanks for watching. Thank you.